Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. And if it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe and share. And I just want to say I appreciate you allowing me into your space, taking up your time. And yeah, it's a wonderful feeling. Um, for my subscribers, thank you for your comments, your support and um, your questions. So this video today, I'm going to show you a video with two boys and they're talking about the black woman, how they've got her back. And it's just, it's such a moving video. It's word sound, but they are so articulate and that it is kind of very fast. So you have to keep your ears to the ground. I did try to look for it on YouTube. I couldn't find it. So I'm sorry about the fact that you have to listen to this video through this medium, but it's the only way I could share it with you. And I felt, felt it was important for you to listen to it. Now, too many times, black women are seen as super women. We're expected to cope, we're expected to manage, we're expected to be everything to everyone. We're mothers, we're sisters, we're parents, we're, ch we're um, siblings, we're daughters. And, you know, we have a lot of demands and sometimes the demand gets too much. We're always being asked to do things, being asked to do things at work, being asked to do things from our parents, being asked to do things from our children, being asked to do things from our, our partners. And, you know, we hardly ever say no. We just keep going and going and going. And I don't know how many of you remember that... Um, show what was she called well she was a presenter Trisha Goddard she actually broke down the demands on her were just too much and as black women we're, we're always stereotyped as being um, independent as being strong we you know we're made to feel as though we're super women I was watching that advert with FNF Tesco, that black woman, and she's lying on the floor. I mean, she's got a baby, but she looks absolutely beautiful as though, you know, regardless of having a baby and running a house, she looks absolutely wonderful. And that is the expectations of black women. And that is why 29% suffer from mental illness, depression, anxiety, because they're trying to cope and they're finding it extremely difficult. And, you know, whether they're on their own or whether they're in a partnership, it doesn't really matter because the stereotype of what black women are remains. So I did want to show you this video because it's almost like these two young boys recognize what black women are going through. And it, it's just nice to hear, nice to know that it's recognized. And so I'm going to show you the video now. Many of you might have seen it, but there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, it's stopped, stopped from the beginning. I know that often you're under attack, woman, and you don't hear this enough when it gets tough, but I've got your back, woman. They talk about how you act, woman. They sound oppressive when they label you aggressive. Your resilience is impressive. They need to use stereotypes as leverage because they envy. Looking 30 at 50, you got me in a frenzy. <laughs> Now, your confidence is beautiful. Now, this may leave others intimidated. Not me, you see, I'm physically attracted and mentally stimulated. You see, everything about you so pure it can never be imitated. So, my choice of words about you have been carefully illustrated. My newbie in Queens. It was you who planted the first seed, hence that name, Mother Earth. And I know the Bible mentions Adam and Eve, but I truly believe that you were here first. The black woman. I want to take them weights off your back. Woman, you the frame precious, you're my enemy, yet yeah, a lax woman. If I'm the bag frame, then you're the bag chain, because without you, I'm not peddling. Your energy reflects the power of your meddling. Your touch makes me hot like the weather in meddling. And every sense you're my go to, I don't need no boot. Black woman, you're my soul food. <laughs> This ain't my opinion, as a matter of fact, woman, every woman in the world wants to be like the black woman. And if you ask me why, I'd say, it's because you're so powerful and intelligent. A gift to man, you're a heaven sent. The most underrated trendsetter, your style is so evident. 
Skin is so elegant. You possess all elements. Everything on this earth is a testament of your excellence. Now, I'm your biggest fan. You live, I'll die for you. If you're sad, I'll cry for you. You brought man this far, so let us walk the remaining mass for you. There's nothing more I can ask of you. Every question I'll go and ask you is, see, the reason I believe my other heart is because I've always been a part of you. You're unstoppable on your own and as a collective. But this hate that we've been taught has been effective. It almost worked to me till I changed my perspective. Ah. See, colorism infected our minds. They taught us to associate negativity with dark things, but nothing could ever make me fall out of love with your dark skin because it was a dark woman that created us dark kings. Come on. <laughs> I just thought it was really, really nice. Not that, you know, we need endorsement or anything, but, you know, when you know when he says you've got your back and you just feel actually that somebody kind of recognises the struggle. And I just wanted to say that in 2014, Adult Psychiatric Morbidity Survey um, found the, pre the prevalence of common mental health problems to vary significantly by ethnic group for women but not for men. Non-British white women were the least likely to have a common mental health problem. It was 15.6%. Followed by white British women, 20.9%. And black and black British women, 29.3%. Black adults were also found to have the lowest treatment rate of any ethnic group at 6.2% compared to 13.3% in the white British group. And that is because a lot of black women, even though they're pushing themselves and struggling to be all they can be, struggling to meet their pe other people's expectations, they don't seek help when they're feeling under weather. They just say, oh, you know, I'm not feeling great. Um, and they just try to deal with it. And that is why they've got the lowest treatment rate. They're not going and seeking support when they're not feeling happy or fulfilled. Um, the media pushes the strong independent woman. Um, like I said, that beautiful woman on the Tesco ad. When, um, you know, we're always expected to be smiling and happy. If we're not, we're told we're aggressive or we're miserable so it's, it's almost like the expectation for a black woman is to be a superwoman, really. And I remember that song, I'm not your superwoman. Anyway, I haven't got no voice, so that's not one thing I'm good at. But um, let me see. Um, yeah. But anyway, for women, you need to communicate what is going on. You don't need to bear it on your own. A lot of women, that's what they're doing. You know, you need to speak to your spouses. And even if they go on like they're not listening, you have to make it clear to them that it's affecting you. Your health is being affected. And if they don't look into it and help you out, that you, they might not even have a mother or a spouse. Because a lot of women are just going under. You know, they can't keep up the charade. They can't keep up this appearance that they're supposed to have. You go to work, you know, like I said, anytime I go to work, oh, man, you look beautiful. Oh, man, you look this. Oh, oh you make such an effort. I make an effort. You know, I make an effort when I go to work, but it doesn't mean that I'm always feeling great. You know what I mean? But because you look okay, people think you are okay. And the thing is, I think I got that from my mum because my mum always used to say to me, 
when you feel, when I feel my worst, I always look my best. And I remember her telling me that, you know, when she didn't even have money, she'd go to work and she, you know, they'd ask her, why isn't she eating for lunch? And she'd say, oh, you know, she had, she, she had something before they came in or she's on a diet or something. That's when she was going through those hard times. So she, I think she taught me that, you know, regardless of what you're, what's going on inside, you must always look your best. And I think that's what a lot of women do. They look their best, even though they're struggling underneath. I'm not saying I'm struggling now or, you know, I'm still kind of reviving myself from a little cold or whatever is going on. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying generally, black women tend to put a, a front you know, make out like things are great. Um, so it's okay not to be okay. Women can be strong and still accept their weaknesses and they can be independent and still be vulnerable. You know, this independent thing is like a noose around their neck because sometimes it means that people do not want to help. They assume, oh, she's independent, she doesn't need support. And those are the women who are probably ending up on tablets you know, taking um, Valium or whatever, um, diazepam or whatever drugs they need in order to get through each day. So it was nice to see the black guys in the video, appreciate, respect and identify with our black womanhood. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.